This is the second video in solving rational equations. In the first video, we had one fraction equal to one fraction, which means we could solve that by just cross multiplying. We don't have that right here. We have several fractions equal to a whole number here. So cross multiplying is not an option. We're going to have to solve this a different way. And we'd like to get rid of the fractions because if the fractions are gone, it's going to be an easier problem to solve. And what we're going to do is multiply both sides by the common denominator. This is going to eliminate any fractions. So we're going to have to name the common denominator for the problem. On this step, all I did was just write this as 4 over 1 because sometimes it makes it easier to do your canceling when this is written as 4 over 1. The common denominator is going to have to be a product of this binomial and this monomial. So the common denominator is just 7 times x plus 2. We need to multiply this side by 7 times x plus 2 and this side by 7 times x plus 2. Unless you are really good with canceling in your head, it's going to be a good idea to write out your distributive property step. We need to multiply this expression, 7 times x plus 2, times both of those. We're going to have to also do it times this side. So it's a good idea to write out this step. I know it's a pain to do that much writing, but it's going to save you in the end if you'll do this. What this line is saying is you need to write the problem out again, spread it out a little bit, and next to each expression you need to write this common denominator. The reason this is helpful is that what we have created are some mini problems to cancel. I can cancel out that x plus 2 with that x plus 2. All that's left is 7 times 3x, which is 21x. Fraction's gone. Over here, I can cancel out the 7s. Now, I need to be careful. That minus goes with the 5, so it would be a good idea to change this to plus a negative. And then distribute the negative 5 through there. Makes negative 5x minus 10 equals... Over here, nothing cancels. I need to do 4 times 7 times the binomial. It's going to be easiest if we do that order. 4 times 7 is 28, and then distribute the 28 times the x plus 2, which will give us 28x plus 56. At this point, all of the fractions are gone. This is plain old Algebra 1 solving. Combine your like terms. Gives you 16x minus 10 equals 28x plus 56. We want to get our x's to one side and our numbers to the other, so subtract 16x from both sides, which gives us negative 10, because those cancel out, equals 12x plus 56. Let's get the x alone. Let's subtract 56 from both sides. Cancels out. We have 12x. Negative 10 and negative 56, so they're both negatives. Keep the negative sign and add. Undo this multiplying step by dividing both sides by 12. And last, reduce your fraction by 6 and get negative 11 halves. Now remember, on these rational equations, you need to check. So I would need to plug negative 11 halves in here for this x. And I know it's a pain to try to check with a fraction and stuff, and I'm not saying you have to do the whole full-blown check. But what you need to check is to be sure that this number put in for x does not create 0 in the denominator. It doesn't, so negative 11 halves is fine. Of course, another way to do this is from the beginning is to look at the denominator and know what number would have created 0. A negative 2 plus 2 would create 0. So that would say negative 2 could not be a solution. Well, it wasn't the solution we got, so we're good with the negative 11 halves. This one is just a tad different because this 4x plus 2 is factorable. So your first step, just like with adding and subtracting rational expressions, is factor the denominators. So this we can factor a 2 out of the denominator. Now I need to name the LCD. Well, the LCD's got to have this 2x plus 1 in it. I have a monomial 3, I have a monomial 2, so I'm going to need a monomial 6 times 2x plus 1 to be my common denominator. Once I've named that as the common denominator, I need to multiply that times both sides. And then I'm going to show my distributing step. Instead of trying to do this canceling in my head right here, write this out. So I've written 6 times 2x plus 1 times each of these three terms. And then I'm going to be able to do a little individual canceling. I have 3 goes into 6 twice. Now, you have options for doing this, but I think if you have a couple monomials 
and a binomial, it's safer to do the 2 times the x and then multiply it times the binomial. So 2x times 2x plus 1 is 4x squared plus 2x. Fraction's all gone. Over here, got lots of stuff to cancel. 2x plus 1 cancels. 2 goes into 6 3 times. 3 times that 3 is 9. Equals. Over here, the 2x plus 1 cancels. Distribute the 6 through here. Makes 6x plus 12. So with that big step there, we have eliminated all of the fractions. Now, this is x squared. It is a quadratic equation. To solve a quadratic equation, you must have everything on one side equal to 0. So I need to subtract 6x and subtract 12 from both sides. So this is 4x squared minus 4x minus 3 equals 0. Once your quadratic equation is equal to 0, now it's ready to factor. Now you could pause the video and see if you could figure out how to factor this on your own, but I'm going to give it to you because this lesson is not on factoring, it's on solving these equations. It has to be 2x and x. It's going to have to be a plus and a minus, and what will work will be a 3 and a 1, and the 3 will need to be here, and the 1 will be here because this will check out and give me negative 4x. When you have something times something equals 0, this is where you set each little piece equal to 0. This is 2x plus 1 equal to 0. This one is 2x minus 3 equal to 0. This is your 0 products property, which you have learned before. Solve this little equation for x. Subtract 1 from both sides will give you 2x equals negative 1. Divide both sides by 2, and x equals negative 1 half. Same steps over here. Add 3 to both sides gives you 2x equals 3, divide by 2, and x equals 3 halves. Now we're not done. We need to check these. If I plug negative 1 half in here or here, I will create a 0 in the denominator because 2 times negative 1 half is negative 1. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. That means negative 1 half is not a solution. You have to throw it out. If you plug 3 halves into either of these denominators, it's okay. It does not create a 0. So that says we have one solution, and it's at x equals 3 halves. Of course, you can write that as 1 and a half or 1.5, whatever your book or your teacher requires. Another similar problem here. Get this denominator factored out. Now look for your LCD. You have x minus 2, so definitely x minus 2 has to be part of the common denominator. I have a 3, I have a 6. I could use 3 times 6 as 18, but since 3 goes into 6, 6 as the monomial will be a smaller number. So we're going to multiply both sides by that 6 times x minus 2, write out your distributing step, and then do your canceling. The biggest pain in these problems is having to do all this writing out, but it will save you in the end because I have little simple canceling. x minus 2 cancels. 3 goes into 6 twice. Now I need to distribute 2 through here, which makes 2x plus 2. On this side, all that cancels is the 6. Distribute that. It's 5x squared minus 10x. Over here, x minus 2 cancels, and I've got 6 times 1 is 6. Like the last problem, this is a quadratic equation. The only way that we're going to solve this is to have everything on one side equal to 0. So subtract 2x, subtract 2 from both sides. And you'll have 5x squared minus 12x plus 4 equal to 0. If we can get this thing factored, then we can solve it. It has to be 5x and x in the front. Since the last sign is positive and the middle is negative, these are both negative, and it's going to be a 2 and a 2. Set each part equal to 0. 5x minus 2 equals 0. Set that one equal to 0. Solve that, and we get x equals 2. Solve this one, add 2 to both sides, divide by 5, and x equals 2 fifths. Now, as for the checking, if you put 2 into this denominator or this one, you get 0 in the denominator. That has to be tossed out. But 2 fifths is okay. It does not create a 0 in the denominator.